There's a lot of new data coming towards us uh, in the emerging field of neuroscience and a lot of people are asking the question about what that actually means to leadership. So oversimplifying a complex topic like neuroscience, I can boil it down to say that really neuroscience is the study of the brain and the nervous system. And neuroleadership is the application of those findings to topics that are connected to leadership. So things like how we work with others, how we make decisions, how we might um, create conditions where employees can thrive. Neuroscience is creating some significant breakthroughs in understanding the way we treat each other. So really it's been applying hard science to what we've typically referred to as soft skills. And it's ultimately about uh, understanding the conditions that people require to uh, attain optimal performance and to ensure their engagement. The brain is beautiful and yet extremely complex. It is the uh, command center for our central nervous system and really it is expertly trained to maximize reward and minimize threat. So what we're trying to do is create more toward responses, which would be maximizing reward, and minimizing threat would mean minimizing away responses, so things that actually make us want to remove ourselves from a situation. So many of us have actually have heard about the limbic system, which is housed within our brain. All of us have one. And the limbic system is sort of a, a, a primal instinct of fight or flight. When the fight or flight response is triggered, it is actually causing a physical change within our body. So our muscles are uh, contracting, our uh, blood is pumping, where our pupils are dilating, we're getting ready to actually engage in something or to get ourselves out of, out of harm's way. Um, but we know that today there aren't any saber-toothed tigers lurking around corners, but in modern times the same physical reaction is coming up for us as it relates to rush hour traffic that's making us late for meetings, conflict in the workplace, um, a bad leader that we may have to face um, and engage in conversations with, um, change that might be happening inside of our organization. So all of these things are literally flashing at us as threats and creating a situation within our brain where we can't actually focus our thoughts. So why is this important? Well, leaders having an understanding of their own brain enables them to understand what may be happening in the brains of their employees. And ultimately, it enables them to create conditions or an environment where employees can thrive. And that means reducing the risk and maximizing reward opportunities. So creating safety to ensure that there aren't threats to employees. And again, those threats could be showing up as conflict, as negative feedback, as a changing environment, um, and then creating the safety for employees to express how they're feeling um, about a particular scenario or what might be happening in their worlds. There is still a lot of information that's emerging in the field of neuroscience. But at Canadian Management Centre, our focus is on building the next generation of leaders and neuroscience is absolutely integrated within that. So what we're trying to do is get information and resources into the hands of the individuals and organizations we serve. So you'll see applications of neuroscience into our programs such as uh, leadership, um, emotional intelligence, uh, communication skills, and even in the learning environments that we're setting up for our participants because we're really trying to maximize the opportunity opportunity for people to get the most out of the experience and to create conditions where people can thrive.